And welcome to Alaska's Native Voice. I'm your host, Antonia Gonzalez. It's the second annual day of the Alaska Federation of Natives Convention, and we're coming to you live from the Denina Center in Anchorage. Today, we want to focus on some of the key issues that are being addressed here at the AFN Convention. Well, I have a couple of guests joining me today, and we'll also hear from some state and federal officials. And so I want to go ahead and introduce my guest. First, we have uh, Patrick Anderson. Please introduce yourself to our audience. Good afternoon, Antonia. Um, I've been uh, involved in the health care system and the social service delivery system. I've been an attorney in Alaska, and also a member of the Sea Alaska Corporation Board of Directors. So uh, my connection with AFN has been almost 35 years. Uh, I've seen a lot go on. I serve as its parliamentarian, so you know, I, I sit here and, and listen to a lot of the discussions. It's uh, exciting, it's challenging, uh, but this is the biggest and best discussion that probably any part of Indian country has among its tribal members about the issues that face us. Uh, Alaska Native organizations, particularly the nonprofits like Natasha worked for and uh, see Alaska Heritage Institute where I'm a trustee, we're looking at the science. We used to have prodigious harvests of herring eggs. Uh, see Alaska is currently undertaking an initiative to try to see if we can uh, transfer uh, egg spawning stock from one locale to another that was productive at some time uh, earlier. The, the North Pacific Fisheries Management Council and the bypass issues, huge, huge. The moratorium that Yukon Kuskokwim uh, did on their fish was a science-based and traditional science-based attempt to see if we could get greater escapement on the Kuskokwim and Yukon River so that uh, the stocks would be um, increasing. Uh, we have to fight uh, various criminal uh, attacks on us, the Kuskokwim fishermen. Uh, Senator Albert Kukesh, uh, in, in Senator Kukesh's case, one member of the Department of Fish and Game made a determination on bag limits without going through any administrative processes, just one individual's whim, uh, and it spawned a criminal case for individuals who were trying to harvest salmon a distance away from their village. Uh, a lot of folk don't understand <coughs> to, to get 40, 50, 60 miles in a boat in Alaska can be very expensive. You don't go there for six, seven, eight fish. You go there for 100, 120, and a lot of elders don't hunt anymore, so you take uh, enough fish for yourself and for the elders. When you think about the fact that there's very little business in rural Alaska, and a lot of that is run by very large corporations, uh, we don't always have the base of folk who have the knowledge to implement uh, development opportunities. That makes partnerships ideal. Uh, they have expertise, they have funding and resources, but we need to have people who are trained and are working hard in their villages to bring those opportunities. One of the examples cited was in uh, Kayana, where a young woman was working on her uh, welding boats, and the representation was that those boats could be built there for 10,000 cheaper, less than you could bring them in from outside. The opportunities are out there. Uh, Allen Marineways in Sitka builds trimarans that are used in, in the tourism industry. Um, at the AVCP convention last week, they had an economic development panel that did highlight another boat building uh, facility, I believe, located in Imanic. Those partnerships with the regional organizations who can work with the villages to develop the capacity, to bring in the financing resources, uh, and to create the pathway to opportunity, I think is the best option. And uh, Natasha, any thoughts? Hello everyone, my name is Natasha Singh. I'm from Fairbanks, Stevens Village. I'm a Stevens Village Tribal Court Judge. I also represent Tanana Chiefs Conference, who is a co-signer to the Indian Health Service Compact. So I have a experience um, on the tribal side and the health side. Just in our interior region, we have 14 villages without the proper water and sewer um, infrastructure and basically the models right now to um, put in place are are, are, ju are just not sustainable in those small villages so what we're asking both the state and the federal governments to do is to find those smaller projects we don't need this huge multi-million dollar pro uh, projects that aren't sustainable um, there are ideas out there we need um, 
a, some funding to develop those ideas and implement those ideas to target those very small villages that don't have proper water and sewer. And um, something else that goes along with, you know, building communities is also uh, the need for economic development like you were uh, uh, talking about and jobs and businesses and, you know, the idea of using the resources here and in a green way. So Patrick, your thoughts on how, um, you know, people, entrepreneurs can make it in Alaska? Um, in Southeast Alaska, we looked at that pretty extensively. We've on, on the Sea Alaska Corporation level, created a, a corporation referred to as Ha'ani, and to make those investments in our villages, recognizing the significant resources that we have uh, and working with the villages and partnerships to create business opportunities. But what's really exciting, uh, if you walk down, as I know you did, at the uh, convention marketplace downstairs, you see an incredible number of entrepreneurs utilizing the resources of Alaska and making a good living out of it. Uh, a couple of my good friends are down there, one from Ketchikan. Uh, I bought a seal skin vest from her a number of years ago. and. Uh, th there's just a lot of product that they work on. Uh, a, a nationally recognized artist that goes down to Santa Fe and has won awards uh, before. Another younger man uh, who started off as an artist not long ago and uh, is producing work that is now, interestingly enough, not just the sale of artwork, but we have to look at the teaching that they're hired to do. School districts, museums, um, there are jobs that come out not only of doing the artwork, but of of doing the work of teaching uh, in, in the cultural arena. We estimated in Southeast Alaska that there was about a $120 million industry in native art. Then you go into other handcrafted items. Uh, in, in Southeast, we, we had a competition to support uh, emerging entrepreneurial bus businesses, just like the Spark Sisters had entered uh, in the marketplace at the AFN. And what we ended up with were two luthiers. Uh, they were competitors, but they joined together. Uh, a guitar is something that you can make in a village on a kitchen table with hand tools. And when you become good, it is an incredible piece of art. Uh, I know we could make uh, a whole lot of things. There was a little uh, youth program in Kodiak that made uh, uh, spinners for fishing. Uh, Someone that I know was making fishing rods, uh, wrapping them, and they hired uh, one of their nieces to be able to wrap that portion of the rod um, in an artistic way. There are just so many things that could be done. They don't take a lot of seed capital, but they do take time to learn the skill, and uh, that's where we would need teaching and training and inspiration. But I think the uh, possibilities of creating an economy in rural Alaska, I think Natasha mentioned it, we're not looking on a huge scale, we want some smaller scale stuff. Uh, I, I just thought of a great example, my friend Sam Alexander from Fort Yukon, he identified that we have a lot of tour, uh, tour groups running through Fort Yukon, but the leaders of these tours and the business owners of these tours are non-local, non-native. So he um, had a business idea, he pursued it, he, he understood he didn't know much about building a business, so he went to the Dartmouth Business School, got his MBA, and has implemented his business up there in Fort Yukon to um, bring tourists out and teach um, the tourists um, about the native people of the area and have a blast doing it on the land. Another example I heard is um, from PJ Simon of our area. You know, constantly we have this discussion that outsiders waste our moose meat. Um, well, he had the great idea to like, let's build up our um, uh, hunting guides. Uh, let's build up our native hunting guides. So not only could we, they make a little money for themselves, but we could also teach them the ways of our people, how our people respect the animals and uh, respect taking of the animals. And that's a good point um, that nothing goes to waste here and you go downstairs in the Arts and Crafts Fair which is a huge economic benefit for the people who come into AFN every year and I know myself <laughs> it's one of my favorite things to go do but um, it's just amazing that the things that go into not only making the artwork but they're all the resources and nothing goes to waste. Patrick? Uh, that's so true. Um, uh, the uh, village corporation in Seldovia, 
some time ago had uh, little gift packs. Uh, I know the Spark Sisters, um, their, their stuff makes great gifts. I bought a bunch of it uh, to bring over to Australia to give to my new in-laws. My daughter is married to an Australian man. Uh, marketing is a good part of that, and um, it's hard to market when you're small, but if there are collaboratives, cooperatives, uh, you can get the word out. And uh, the resources that we have are, um, you know, they're plentiful. A lot of them are renewable. Uh, my friend Elston Lawson years ago in an OEDP for Tannin Achieves had proposed that uh, uh, some of the botanicals, um, I mean, every year the fern grow. Every year, the floral industry uses incredible amounts of fern. They grow back, and you have more for the next year. There's just a, a lot of renewable resources up here that have been used by native people. Um, the pharmaceutical, nutraceutical industry. Uh, I know in southeast Alaska and south central, uh, blueberries are very high in antioxidants, uh, and uh, they're, they're purchased for a pretty good price per pound. So uh, there, there absolutely are great resources out there we could utilize. All right, great. Well, today uh, you're listening to Alaska's Native Voice, and we're talking about some of the priorities that people are speaking about here. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're listening to Alaska's Native Voice. We are live from the Denina Center at the Alaska Federation of Natives Annual Convention. I'm your host, Antonia Gonzalez. And today we're talking about some of the priorities people are focusing on here at the conference. And um, we've talked a little bit about rural development, uh, subsistence, um, protecting subsistence rights and businesses. I have two guests joining me today. And we're also hearing from uh, attendees that we've spoken to throughout the conference. I'd like to welcome back my guest, Pat Patrick Anderson, welcome back. Uh, thank you. And Natasha Singh, welcome back. Thanks. We need to have good prevention programs. We need to revamp our health care system so that the individuals who are coming seeking help for behavioral issues have a place to go. Right now, if you come in with, with uh, depressive issues, it's usually an indicator of a lot of, of childhood trauma. You're given medication. Medication doesn't heal the trauma. These children are crying out for healing. We need to have that conversation. And I challenge the Native community to actually start having it. Our leadership in the tribal health system. Um, the adverse childhood experience study itself was done of a population of white, middle class uh, people with, with health care. 21% of that population was abused. 27% of the women, 16% of the men. I am so happy and proud of that young woman for pointing out the problem that it's not just a woman problem. It's more severe for women, but it affects our boys. And our boys who are sexually assaulted usually come on to be perpetrators. You just need to go ask in prison uh, the things that happen to the people that are, the, that are in the men's prison. And a great number of them will tell you about the abuses they suffered. Um, it, it's, it, it's heartwarming. Um, we're talking about the symptoms right now, and we're talking about the acts perpetrated, but we need to talk about the healing. And I think um, something that goes along with the healing that you see a lot at the Elders and Youth Conference is tradition and culture, and uh, you know, expressing that through cultural ways. And we've talked to a lot of young people who say that um, you know, culture is making them feel better. Speaking their, learning their languages are making them feel better. So. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Alaska's Native Voice, and join us again tomorrow. Alaska's Native Voice, produced and anchored by Antonio Gonzalez. Technical operations by Sarah Gustavus.